Hello, in this lesson, I want you to combine functions by adding, subtracting, and multiplying. Or leaving out dividing, you'll do that in Algebra 2. You also do something else you'll learn about later. The first thing we're going to take a look at is it's really not that different than what we've done before. It's just the notation that I want you to learn. And that is when it comes to combining function, when, when you say f plus g of x, that means we're going to take the first function f of x plus the second function g of x and combine them. In other words, we're just going to add them. And the same thing as subtracting. Remember, when you subtract though, we're going to add the opposite. So let's take a look at example one. Shrink this a little bit so we can see it. So it says f plus g of x means I'm going to add f of x and g of x, which means I'm going to take f of x, which is 3x plus 7. We're going to add g of x, which is negative 4x squared plus x minus 2. Notice only one term has negative 4x squared in it. So that's my second term. So my answer is going to be negative 4x squared. Now let's combine our g of x's. So we're going to add 3x and 1x. So 3 plus 1 is plus 4x. Finally, we'll add our constant term. 7 minus 2 is positive 5. And there's our answer to combining these two terms by adding. Now let's take a look at example 2. We're going to go through the same process, except now we're going to subtract them. So it's other, in other words, it's f of x minus g of x, which is going to be 3x plus 7 minus negative 4x squared plus x minus 2. Remember when you subtract, we add the opposite, so it's actually 3x plus 7. I'm going to change my minus sign to a plus. I'm going to distribute that negative sign to each term. So I'm going to go plus 4x squared minus x and then plus 2. Change the signs of everything. And just like before, there's only one term that has a squared in it, and that's 4x squared. So we're going to say 4x squared. Now we'll go, this time we'll go, um, let me highlight these here first. And there we go. I'm going to go 3x minus x. Well, that'll be positive 2x. Then 7 plus 2 would be 9. And there's our solution to that problem. Okay, let's take a look at kind of a word problem here. Ruby wants to buy a new car for $19,500. She expects the car to decrease by about 20% each year. Well, that means a decrease of 20% equals, whoops, is the same as retaining 80% of the value. In other words, my, my R is 80%. So I want to write a function to represent this f of t after t years. So I'm going to say f of t equals 19,500 times 0.8 because it's retaining 80% of the value every single year. And then we want to do the same thing for her motorcycle. Well, her motorcycle, they want to call that G of T. Well, that will be, she's going to get uh, 
Oh, it's just going to go down by 350 per year. So she's going to go 4,800. We're not going to do an exponential decay. We're just going to say, oh, it's going to lose 350 T every year. So now to combine these on example six, I'm going to, I'm going to take 19,500 times 0.8 to the T power plus 4,800 minus 350T. Notice I can't combine these because this T is not an exponent. This T is an exponent. So now, on the third part, we're just going to replace T with 5. So in other words, I'm going to say 19,500 times 0.8 to the fifth power plus 4,800 minus 350 times 5. And now we'll just use our calculator to find that. I want to use the scientific on this one because I'm not going to do any graphing and I got to remember where my calculator here here it is so we're going to take got to remember I think it's 19,500 wasn't it yeah 19,500 times 0.8 so 19,500 times 0.8 I think I got two decimals in there don't I times 0.8. I'm going to put that in parentheses. And I'm going to raise that to the fifth power. And I'll add 4,800 minus 350 times 5. So out of her initial investment, She's got $9,439.76. Investing in vehicles is not a smart idea. You lose money. Now, if she's going to ride them, she's going to get some enjoyment out of it. So that's good. So you just have to, but you have to realize you're paying for that. Okay, now when we multiply functions, pretty much the same thing, except we're going to probably use the distributive property. So when I multiply two functions, I just multiply each function together. So on this particular problem, I want to find f of g of x, which is the same thing as f of x times g of x. In other words, f of x is 5x plus 1. I'm going to multiply that by negative x squared plus 3x minus 2. I probably should have stopped this video sooner, but we'll finish this page. Well, <coughs> I've got a binomial times a trinomial. I always like to do... The box method. So I'll go negative x squared plus 3x minus 2 going across the top. Then on the side I'll do 5x plus 1. I'm going to do the 1 first because that's easy to copy. So it's negative x squared plus 3x minus 2. And then I will multiply 5x times each of them. So I'm going to get negative 5x cubed. And then plus 15x squared. And then minus 10x. And then I'll look at my diagonals for my like terms. So negative x squared and 15x squared, 10x, negative 10x and 3x. So my answer is going to be f, whoops, 
And let's forget to do that. Darn it. So I'm going to say f times g of x is going to be negative 5x cubed. And then my plus 14x squared. And then minus 7x minus 2. And there's our answer to example 8.